Hey everyone, it's Melanie of Art Studio 320 and I'm sitting in front of a monstrous piece of furniture. It actually belongs to uh, the set that I already painted, a table and a buffet. This is actually the piece that sits on top of the buffet, if you can believe that. It's so huge. They actually don't have it on top of the buffet. They want this to stand alone and uh, the customer has requested that I put feet on it. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to be taking the doors off and this is an extra piece on top that was added. It was custom made by a friend of theirs. It's absolutely beautiful. And we're gonna be taking that off too because it's very heavy. So it'll make it easier for me to maneuver the piece around. I'm gonna be painting it in basilisk black like the other two pieces. And I'm gonna be using one. This is a brand new product. One means that it's a one in all in one paint. It has primer and top coat in it. So I'm very excited about using this because top coat and I don't like each other. This will hopefully make my life much easier. Yay. I will let you know what I think of it after I use it. If you haven't subscribed yet, please take a moment and press that red button. You can also follow me on Instagram and find me on Etsy where I am selling past projects from this channel. Stick around. When you have a piece like this with a lot of moving parts, so to speak, things that you can take out, you need to label everything. Top middle, top left, bottom, because they may not fit the same depending on where they go. So I'm taking the doors off and you have to be careful when you take those heavy doors off. You gotta make sure you always secure it with your hand. Now the middle shelves sat on their own without the screws, but on the right and the left, there was one spot right here that it was not secured and look what happens. I got comfortable with the idea that it just sat there and I didn't realize I got lucky, but I'm super upset. Holy cow, it could have been way worse, but there is a scratch on the mirror and there's the chip right there. Very small, you won't see it once it's in. But now this is the way I should have been doing it, but this is just a lesson in take inventory of how things are put together before you take anything apart. This is called Scotch Blue. It's painter's tape with plastic attached to it. I've used it before. It's great for spraying, um, but it takes some time. You have to be patient because you gotta get it right. There's the label. It comes in two sizes. I have both because <laughs> I need both. Uh, the plastic's just longer on the taller one. Hey guys, I just wanna check in real quick. I wrapped up all of the body of the piece and I woke up this morning and thought, oh my God, I totally forgot <laughs> to do the doors. And then I'm going to sand. I should be able to <laughs> spray. Cross your fingers and hopefully today will be an extremely productive day. Yeah, all right, let's get to it. Okay, I'm going to cover the doors and they are tricky because there is a gap between the glass and the wood. And the time I did it before on the last piece, I got the tape so far in there, it was hard to get out. The top that I talked about before, it's very heavy and I wanted to remove it so that this piece was easier to move around. And there were just two big screws holding it in. And once again, I'm labeling the screws because I'm not gonna remember. <laughs> There's just too much hardware on this. It's just a good idea always to label. Taking off the top made it easier to work on and I wanted to clean it off with some vinegar and water and then I sanded it with my orbital sander with a 120 grit and then I think I changed it to 60 grit. And I also hand sanded around the edges. 
I'm now cleaning off the rest of the piece with vinegar and water and making some repairs with plastic wood X and scuffing this up with a 120 and I believe I may have changed it to 60 grit. You kind of have to feel out each piece and then I'm wiping it all off with a tack cloth. Here I'm getting ready to spray. You always want to prep your surfaces <laughs> on the piece and around the piece when you're spraying. And on the inside these are can lights and I used the uh, scotch blue to tape up the can lights instead of taking them out. I could have taken them out, but this was much easier and it worked right, very well. All right, I have two Melange Basilisk Blacks. One is the all-in-one and the other is just the regular mineral paint. I used the regular mineral paint as my base coat and then I used the one as my second coat, which had the top coat and the primer attached to it. So it had double protection. <laughs> you always want to strain your paint. And I think I did water it down at some point. Yes, I did. Yeah, I watered it down before I did this and my coverage was much better here. Then I go back and I use my sanding pads, my tack cloth between each coat of paint. And this is my second coat, which would be the Melange One. All right, it is morning again. I think I mentioned that the customer wants feet put on this piece. I'm waiting for those to come in the mail and then I will put those on. But in the meantime, I can finish up everything else. A couple updates, uh, one really cool one. This is my Wagner sprayer container. <laughs> Well, what I discovered was, look at that. That's the lid to my Basilisk Black Melange paint. And inside is gold. <laughs> so essentially, this is my pot of gold. Um, this is all I have left of the paint. Melange paint is very thick. And um, so I decided that uh, I would add some water, which I did last time and it really helped, it, it really improved the flow. And why I didn't do it right off the bat, I'm not sure, yesterday, but I don't think I'll forget again. So I added a little bit of water and it improved the viscosity, meaning the flow through the gun, it thinned out the paint so that it, it moved through the gun a little bit easier. The coverage was much better. I noticed that before I did that, I was going through a lot of paint, but it wasn't covering. I can't explain that one. I got the flow to where I wanted it and everything is much better. As a result, this is all I have left. This is actually the one, uh, the all-in-one Melange Basilisk Black. It goes on really nicely. It looks really nice, but this is all I have left and I have to go around find any spots that need to be touched up. I always say this, when once you paint, you're always gonna find things that you couldn't see before you painted, especially if you're going from light to dark, because dark always shows every imperfection in the wood. And um, what I discovered yesterday was at the very base of the piece, there were some very large cracks, like foundation type cracks. And <laughs> not really, but, um, just from the wood getting old, I suppose. This is about 20 plus years old. And um, so it's showing some age. And so I caught those, I put some um, plastic wood X, the wood filler on it and sanded it down. And uh, this morning I discovered on the other side that there were some. The thing about um, the light, depending on where you're working, I'm working outside. So the light changes and sometimes you can't always see everything in that time period. So it's always good to check in the morning versus the evening and the afternoon. So you can see all different parts of the piece or you can use a flashlight <laughs> to, to look it all over, done that too. And I've, I've seen a couple of spots that I missed, which is pretty normal. So that's what this is for. The doors are finished, I think. I'm gonna go over them again. 
I actually had my second set of eyes, my husband, <laughs> Bill, come out and kind of look at everything. Um, because when you're looking at something for a long time, you kind of can't see it anymore. So if you don't have a second set of eyes, uh, make your eyes a second set on a different day. <laughs> today, I'm going to paint the hardware. The other thing I have to do today is I'm gonna put on this, I mix these together. Um, these are two metallic waxes and um, they smell really weird. It smells like old lady perfume. Sorry, I, I prefer to call them seniors. So I'm going to be using this, a mixture. I mix it on here. See? That's about the color it is. And I put it on the carved. Can you see that? Let's get this party started. <laughs> This hardware was kind of grungy, so I cleaned it off with some vinegar and water, and then I sprayed it with the Universal Rust-Oleum in the color Satin Nickel. In order to spray paint all the little pieces, I use a cardboard box so that I can stick all the nails into holes in the box. That way I can spray everything at once. Now I'm going back over the doors with the sanding pads to finish up the paint. And then I'm gonna go back and just hit it with little spots that I may have missed. Um, this is where Phil comes into play again because I have him look at all these places. This piece had a lot of spots that I kept finding. Oh, I missed this place, I missed this place. So you need to take the time and look at it more than once. Now, when you pull off the tape, you need to be very careful. And I have this on time-lapse, but you can still see how slow I'm going. Um, that's so you don't pull the paint off. It's ideal if you can pull it off while it's still wet, but there's no way you can do that with a piece like this. Okay, a couple quick updates. Um, Yesterday, I started taking the plastic and the tape off of the glass and the mirrors. And when I took it off of the mirrors, you could see the wood behind. And you can see that it is reflecting stained wood that it was before. Now, when they built this, they probably stained all the parts before they assembled it. I looked to see if I could take it apart. Now, I did not foresee this and I don't think anybody would unless they did exactly this piece before. Now I did do the buffet, but it didn't have the same structure on the inside and it does not reflect like this does. So with that in mind, I used my second set of eyes, that would be Phil, and we discussed a couple of different ideas, one being a Sharpie, which no. <laughs> what we came up with was this, a caulk gun, and this is black caulk. We're going to get caulk. Yep, black right. caulk. That's my second set of eyes there. Okay, so which kind? I want black. Oh, oh, that's dark brown. Why do I need to use latex? Because you need to be able to clean it off of the wood with water. Okay, and what's the other kinds? Uh, solvent based, then that won't work. It'll smear. So, what is silicone? Uh, I don't know what silicone's based, but it'll smear and you can't paint it. So. Okay. One hour rain ready. Clean up water. Okay, so this will work. So are you wanting this, but you want it in a caulk well, gun? Well, I, want, I wanted this here, this DAP 230. What do you call these things anyway? Caulk tubes. Caulk tubes. Oh. I thought this would work this... for you too, but they then yeah. it comes in clear. And white. Maybe white. Yeah. It's white right there. This is your only choice. This should go. This should go. I don't know. I have to use a caulk gun. <laughs> It'll be great. Alrighty. It'll be great. 
Last night, Phil showed me how to use a caulk gun. I've used it before. It's been a while and it's not something I retain unless I use it all the time and since I don't, but I think I got it. Um, he cut a tiny little hole in the tip and he made it on an angle so it'd be easy to make a bead right along that gap between the mirror and the wood. Time to start caulking. Pew, pew. <laughs> Maybe I'll do a video just on applying caulk, but there's a little trigger and you kind of have to pump it a little after you've been using it a little while. And then you just have to keep going because it's going to keep flowing until you hit this little metal lever on the back. It'll just keep coming out. So you have to remember to stick, uh, hit that lever. And then you go back with your finger to get it in there and smooth it out. Then you go back with a wet cloth and wipe it down again. Now I had the glass right there, so I had to keep wiping it off until I got it off the glass. And then I went back later with a 220 sponge sander and uh, sanded the glass. You can do that if it's a very, very fine sandpaper. I'm not gonna lie, this was messy, <laughs> but it worked. I had to go back after I was all finished and paint over some of the areas where the caulk got onto the wood, because it was darker. And then I was using my tiny little brush with my leftover paint and just touching up all those little spots where the tape was covering. All right, I have two colors I'm using for my um, metallic wax and I'm mixing them together on my little palette. <laughs> and I have a, a wider flat brush that I used the last time I had to embellish on the pieces that look just like this and it worked very well. So now I'm just going to lightly kind of kind of a dry brush technique. I didn't want to paint it on there because I wanted it uh, some of the darker areas to show through so there was some contrast there. Otherwise if you painted the whole thing it wouldn't have any dimension. And that's it. Then I went back and I cleaned everything off where it didn't belong with mineral spirits and uh, a cloth. Mineral spirits is great for cleaning off wax. So if you ever have a spot where you didn't mean to put the wax, just use mineral spirits. Look how easily that comes off. Well, the feet came in the mail. <laughs> And I just painted them up, and you can see what they're called in the description box below. Now it's time to put the hardware back on, and you see I labeled the hardware and the door, so I knew which way to put this hardware. It was tricky, and I knew this because of the last time I did uh, the buffet that sits on the bottom of this piece that it was tricky to remember. So I labeled everything and which way it went. These are the handles and just adding those back on. In order to put the feet on, I needed the help of my husband once again <laughs> to get this piece up on its back so I can measure out how these go. Now you have to be careful with each piece. You have to look at the structure. You see that there is a seam there where the two pieces on the bottom come together. I did not want to drill on that crack. And you just have to maneuver it, measure it, so everything is the same on all four corners. And you put that plate on and drill the holes, put the screws in and screw in your little pumpkins. <laughs> They have pumpkin in the name. I'm not kidding. And there you have it. 
it has legs now. It looked, they looked like they belonged. They really did. I was very excited about that. Okay, thank you, Phil. I needed that extra set of hands. And thankfully, I wasn't stubborn about putting the glass in because I knew what could happen. I was stubborn about putting those stupid doors back on. They are so heavy. You need a second set of hands. I tried to do it without, and I got very frustrated, and it was just easier to ask for help. All I needed was a second set of hands. And as a result of me trying to do it by myself, I dinged the inside of the piece. So I had to go back. Thank goodness, Plastic Wood X works so well, because I fixed it and you couldn't even tell. And here we go for the big ta-da. That looked pretty dang good. Now, the dolly's still underneath, but man, it looks good. Well, friends, that is all I have for you this week. <laughs> this was a lot of muscle work. I am so stubborn and yes, Teddy, I am stubborn. <laughs> I tried to put the doors back on by myself. I put the first one on and oh my Lord, I had to go in and have ice cream so I could do the rest and I had to humble myself and ask my husband for help. Honestly, I don't know why I am so stubborn. I, I guess I'm trying to prove something. I'm trying to prove to myself, to you, that I can do this on my own. And in reality, we all need a little help sometimes and there's nothing wrong with that. So don't be afraid to ask. I learned something. Just ask. You'll save yourself a lot of heartache. Oh my goodness. I sweated a lot trying to put those shelves back in and trying to put the doors back on. Thank you, honey. Thanks, Phil, for helping me. It's nice to have some help. I'm very glad to be finished with this. I hope that you learned something. I hope you can walk away from this project saying, yep, not going to do that one. <laughs> but I will tell you this, if there are mirrors and there are glass, you might want to do it. You might not. And it's okay if you say, you know what? I think I'll pass. I'm really hoping my customer is happy and now she'll have a full set. She does want a couple of chairs done that also match this set. Oh boy. <laughs> That's for another day. Thanks for being here. See you next time. You can do it. Parce que je me sentais seule dans ma petite bulle. Je voulais danser mais je me sentais comme un funambule. Parce que je me sentais seule et t'es arrivé. T'as soufflé sur mon visage comme une brise légère au dété. Oh.